everyone, and welcome to our Real Conversation in English. I'm Liz Wade, and this is Adam Navis. Hello. Hi, Adam. And today, we are going to have a conversation about our program called Music in War. And this is kind of a complicated program, but if you have not had a chance to listen to it, there are a couple different ways you can do that. You can go to our website at www.spotlightenglish.com. You can listen to it on our podcast where you can find that uh, almost anywhere that we have or that you can find podcasts. And also you can go to YouTube at uh, Spotlight English One is our channel. And so you can check that out there follow that along. And of course, if you are already on YouTube, you might notice right underneath this video, there's a join button. And we encourage you to press that join button. That doesn't make you pay right away, but it does give you um, some information about becoming a member of this channel and all of the resources that you are able to get as a member, including free PDF scripts, um, a few of those a month, um, additional video content, your name in every video, and um, some other really cool things as well. So we really encourage you to click that join button. And uh, also, if you're on YouTube, please just uh, take a little second right now to hit that like button. And um, that really helps us spread Spotlight English on YouTube. So. Now that that housekeeping is done, so, <laughs> right, Adam, that's what, that's exactly. some housekeeping it's, that it's we're doing. <laughs> the little bits that we do every time. Yes. Now that that housekeeping is done and you know where to find that program, uh, take a listen and then join us in this conversation. So, Adam, yes. this program, I always feel like um, when I hear a program like this, it is so sad and sometimes mm. they're really difficult to listen to because you're really talking about um, war. And right. one of the things that really hit me in this program is that it wasn't a one-time thing where music in war was an important thing. Yeah. This program goes all the way from World War II to the 1990s to the late or mid 2010s. And um, I imagine that it could continue on into many generations. Oh, and that sadly, is, yes. yeah, that is really something that I noticed in this program. Yeah, I I noticed um, a similar thing. I, so I had two two things to, I have never lived through a war. And I'm, I'm very appreciative that affected of that. You, that affected yes. like our area. Right. And um, uh, for any of our listeners who have, our hearts, of course, go out to you. And if you're yes. listening to this and you're actively in a war zone or a conflict zone of some kind, we just we we hope and pray that you are safe. Um, but the second thing that I thought about this uh, program, which really walks through just one example of music uh, in war and music as a form of protest, it reminded me of all the other examples where music or poetry or, or other kinds of creative uh, painting murals or, or things are an act of protest or an act against war. And I just think sometimes you think of art as fun or entertainment. And I just, I don't think I spend enough time thinking about art or music specifically yeah. as a way to um, say something important to protest. And of course, there's right. a long tradition of that. Right. Because uh, I was going to add, you know, sometimes people think art is not important, right? Yeah. So not only is it, you know, just for fun or beauty, but it's just, it's not important. And clearly here... Um, it ha it has been important. Yeah. I think um, for me at the beginning of this program, when, when it talks about um, this composer who walks through the ruins in Dresden, Germany, and is inspired to make the song. What is the song called? I'm forgetting the name of it. 
Al um, Albinoni's Adagio. Oh, okay. So this this composer is inspired by this these ruins to make this song, um, and then um, then the program goes into into the 1990s into the former Yugoslavia. Um, into that war in Sarajevo and there's a siege and um Vidran Smilovic that is a very easy to remember name well said um uh he is he is in that siege and is there siege is... we should pause and talk about is yeah. siege well oh, first good. of all it's a very hard word to say but yeah. do people siege or siege Ooh. I think both are good I think both are okay yeah so a siege is um, like a, a a war that isn't active but is active. So you if you surround a city and stop all people going in or going out, you've kind of created a siege environment. So it's it's war, but it's not like there's there's some fighting, but it's it's defined by that kind of locked in um, can't nothing's moving. No, people often don't have food. They often don't have medical supplies. It's very hard to live in those kind of conditions. Right. So uh, the story concentrates on this um, bomb attack in Sarajevo where um, uh, people are waiting in line at a bakery and this bomb is uh, set off in that line and 22 people are killed. And um, the Vedran Smilovic, Smilovic is um, in that city, and um, he decides to, as a form of um, protest, but also as remembrance, um, he plays his cello, which is a, a very big stringed instrument. It looks like a like a large violin or a little bit like a guitar, a, a large guitar. Um, he plays his cello for 22 days, and that is remembering um, each day is for a person who was killed in that bombing. Um, and I, yeah, he, and he, I think he only played that adagio, mm. right? Yeah, I'm not, I think that's right. I think that was what he was saying. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I thought that was. That was, you know, when you when you hear something over and over again, it can maybe be frustrating, like, you know, like, uh, but this is a way to use that frustration, I think, to like, remember, like, you know, if you're getting if you walk by the same place and right. he's playing his cello and it is the same thing every day, it reminds you of that of that constant loss. Right. right. Because, of, it's, of course, it's very easy to forget. It's very easy, especially yes. we, when something so painful happens, you want to kind of move on and say you're all right and not not be in that place of pain. But yeah. it's, sometimes it's important to remember it. Sometimes it's important to um, because we can't we can't move on. We even if we convince ourselves that we can, we have to just be in that painful place. I don't like to be there and I don't think you do either, but it's. Yeah. It's necessary to give honor to the people who've died, but also to um, call people to account, you know, to say, like, this isn't right. Even if there's no one person who yeah. you can find to say, oh, what you did was wrong. If it's just it, it's just to, you know, I think there's a line in it um, in the program that says it presented something beautiful in the middle of death and destruction. It was a song right. of hope. And I really like that. I, I like that. I like thinking about it didn't change the situation, but it did offer hope. And I think sometimes that does change situations if you have hope. Yeah. Yeah, that is um, that is an interesting thought. Like it's a symbol that that not everything is lost, right? That there's still beauty, there's still hope, which can feel uh, it can feel hollow when you're in that situation. So you might feel like there's no hope. Um, and I think even if you, I mean, obviously this is a, if you have been in war, that's a different feeling. Um, 
But I think even if you have had a crisis in your life or something very difficult that you've gone through, it can be hard to remember that there still is beauty in life. So, um, yeah, that is a, that's a good thing to remember. Well, and we can all make art and we can all express ourselves. Yeah. I think that there are times in all our lives where we find ourselves not knowing what to do or not able to make things happen at the speed or we don't have total control, right? But we can yeah. sing, we can dance, we can create something with our hands in our minds. And I think that the act of creation is sometimes um, a very human thing, a very, um, we may have been told we're not creative or we, we're not artistic, but just the simple act of even sketching something with a pen and paper can help express and help get something, get that pain out of you and offer you that kind of hope. I don't know if, um, I, I would say if you're watching this and you have, found a way, if you have a way of expressing yourself, if you uh, have either had to process something hard, or maybe you you consider yourself an artist, uh, tell us about it in the comments. I would love to hear about that. I know that I like to, um, I often keep a journal. I'm not a mu musical person, but I like to do that. I don't know, Liz, do you do anything that you would say like that gives you hope or that you'd, you'd think of as creative or centering or... Something like I don't that. have to think about that. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that I'm a very artistic person. Although I do really like creating art. Yeah. Um, I like making things with my hands, and I do think that that is um, it's healing for me in a way that just thinking about things isn't. But I do, I do always think that I should, I should journal more because that actually is very helpful. That, um, you yeah. know, we have a, a program about that. I think about um, journaling or yeah. handwriting is actually a good way to, uh, yeah, get your feelings out and work through those. I think that's a really beautiful thought. That like, even if you are in a period of suffering, and I, I think many of us. Um, you know, some of us in war who may be watching this, some of us who are just in pain. Um, but I mean, everyone who is watching this has been affected by COVID and that has changed everyone's lives. Yeah, um, sure. And I think it's a really beautiful thought to say, um, if that is affecting you, uh, make some art, put yeah. some beauty into the world, even if it's not the most beautiful beauty. Yeah. Um, even if it's not the most beautiful uh, poetry or words, put some out and um, see how it makes you feel. I would really love to hear about that in the comments if you yeah. have done that. Um, and even I if think it's that's a, just with your phone, like that's okay. But I mean, you know, yeah. take, a, take a picture and share it, or or yeah. take a draw something, or or just figure out a way that you can can add a little hope to the world. Yeah, I love it. Um, and I think that's a really uh, good and positive note for us to end on. I think so. Yeah. So uh, leave us a comment below. Please press like on this video if you liked it. Check out the program Music in War if you haven't already. Check us out on our website uh, so that you can follow along with programs and listen to them at the same time. That's www.spotlightenglish. Dot com. Make sure to check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And thanks for joining us. Until next time, listen, watch, practice, learn. Spotlight out. Mm -hmm.